Hello everyone and welcome back to Filmbook Review, an official YouTube channel of Filmbook. Featured in Google News, IMDb's news desk and a member of the Critics' Choice Association, Filmbook is an entertainment industry news website that reports on the film and television show industries in the United States and across the globe. Today on Filmbook Review, I'll be reviewing the film The Last Thing Mary Saw, a movie that screened at the 2021 Fantasia International Film Festival. The Last Thing Mary Saw is directed by Eduardo Vitaletti, written by Eduardo Vitaletti, and stars Isabella Furman, Rory Culkin, Stephanie Scott, Shane Coffey, and Carolyn McCormick. This is a The Last Thing Mary Saw movie review, and there will be spoilers. If you like our movie reviews, please like this The Last Thing Mary Saw film review, as that helps us out with YouTube's algorithm, and consider subscribing. Once subscribed, click the bell notification box, and you are all set. Please also consider becoming one of our patrons on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash filmbook. It's convenient that Fantasia programmed a robust doc about folk horror and witchcraft, as it's proving to be a good primer for the rest of their lineup. Case in point, the last thing Mary saw, Eduardo Vitaletti's feature-length debut about religious radicalism pushing people to their wit's end. And yet, Vitaletti's strength is his restraint with the fantastical, using it sparingly to achieve a potent sense of surprise. In fact, with two or three small moments that serve as major exceptions, the concepts of witchcraft and magic in The Last Thing Mary Saw are all but non-sequiturs. Vitaletti's film is more akin to Robert Eggers' The Witch in its shared critique of religious authority being used to perpetrate abuse, though without quite as much of the latter's moral ambivalence. The titular Mary, who we first see bound up with her eyes gouged out, recounts these abuses to her police interrogator as she awaits sentencing following a tragic event. Through flashbacks, Mary tells of her family's isolated existence on the tip of Long Island in the 1840s, and how strict Christian piety was upheld through mutual surveillance and disclosure. That's how she and her lover, the family's servant Eleanor, were caught and forced to undergo corrections to appease the family matriarch. And yet, time after time of endless prayer sessions with knee braces atop sprinkled grains of rice, Mary recounts that her and Eleanor's spirits were never broken. Eventually, they conjure up a plan to escape with help of the family's guardsman, a man who holds similar vengeance against the matriarch for her ruthless leadership. Mary and Eleanor's plan goes off without a hitch, or as small a hitch as possible, considering every other member of the house will rat them out upon the faintest suspicion of a discrepancy. But events take a tumultuous turn when a mysterious stranger comes to the house, throwing Mary and Eleanor's plan out of balance and setting in motion evil forces lurking amidst the house's walls. Vitaletti's riff on the Lizzie Borden tale, complete with lesbianism and gruesome violence, is nothing novel. In fact, for the first half of this sleek 90-odd minute horror drama, it actually plays out in a droll manner. David Kruter's dark cinematography, accentuated with only the low-lit orange flickers of firelight, is as pretty as it is irritating in an obvious method of obfuscation. We feel like we've seen all this before, making this a well-crafted, though relatively safe retread. However, the skillful infusion of dark magic and lore into only small points of the plot, particularly the climax, suddenly reframes everything within a most peculiar perspective. It adds a delightful ambiguity to the wider narrative that leaves you pondering its potential breadth. Yet, Vitaletti's scope is still narrow enough so that the film never grows too big for its own britches. Rather than using the supernatural as a crutch, the last thing Mary saw sees it as a terrifying hypothesis that can bring up as many questions as it does answer. That's not, however, to imply that it's perfect in pulling off this feat. Framing the dark magic adult reveal as it does makes us wonder what the film is ultimately saying about both religious abuse and queerness as an identity. Are we supposed to assume that religiosity is but a sham that people manipulate to serve their own ends? And the tragedy is how those in power eventually get others to unsuspectingly bend to their will? Or is the tragedy that said adherents know it's a sham outright, yet they still willingly submit to the jig? In line with his previously established sense of ambiguity, 
Vigilante doesn't give us a straight answer to that question. Unfortunately, by doing so he also throws the film's alignment of Mary's queerness into question. Does she truly consider herself evil and recounts her sexuality, or does she learn that the only way to live as your true queer self is to become evil? The latter supposition would be nothing new, as the queer-coded villain has long been a trope both in and outside of the horror genre, but the lack of thematic committal to that read or the former throws the entirety of the text into discomforting territory, wherein the film's actual morals get a bit confused. It's having your satirical cake and eating it too, but without enough sustenance for either to be satisfying, even for the most tolerant of indulging connoisseurs. In that regard, the film's ambiguity may ultimately be its crux as well. Regardless, there's still plenty to enjoy in here to make it an intriguing genre romp. It's still great to see Furman on screen, who between this and her award-winning turn in The Novice is having quite the festival run this year. Roberts is a personal fave, and seeing her play the cold-hearted grandma with relentless cruelty was a sick bit of fun. The MVP, though, is Culkin, who makes the most of his relatively limited screen time to be downright unnerving and truly terrifying. The last thing Mary saw is a competent debut from a promising director that, despite its bumpy messaging, is a dastardly dark dysfunctional drama. You won't need an exorcism to cleanse yourself of it, but it'll still get under your skin. And that brings us to the conclusion of this The Last Thing Mary Saw movie review. I would love to hear your thoughts on it below in the comment section. If you liked what you heard during this review, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for viewing, and you can watch one of these reviews next.